Is the Insect Queen an underrated card in vintage Yu-Gi-Oh? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's going on folks? Welcome back to the Parkside Merchant channel. If you're new to our channel, we cover all kinds of exciting topics related to vintage trading card collecting and the Yu-Gi-Oh market. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe on this video to help support our channel. So the topic of today's video is going to be the Insect Queen card. This is one of my personal favorite cards, and I just wanted to share a little bit about my perspective on some of the trade-offs associated with this card. Because I do recognize that while I like the card, there's a lot of folks that don't really see much value in it and feel that it is comparatively a lot less interesting than some of the other staple monsters from its era. So I wanted to first lay out a couple of reasons why I like the Insect Queen card and why I think it might be underrated by collectors. So the first reason is that the card gets used by Joey Wheeler in the original anime series as part of what I think of as the holy trinity of his cards from Battle City. Now, yes, with Joey Wheeler, right, you have a lot of these season one cards that were very popular that he used. There'd be things like the Red Eyes Black Dragon, Time Wizard, Thousand Dragon. He had a whole bunch of cards that were very popular and remain to this day some of the highest valued cards from those original sets, like Metal Raiders, for example. Um, in addition to Joey Wheeler's first season cards, in season two, he basically wins three prize cards over the course of his duels, right? Uh, the first one that I believe he wins is the Jinzo card in the match with Esperoba, right? Very iconic card there, Pharaoh's Servant. Very, very highly valued card, secret rare from that set. So that one's got a lot of staying power with it. The next one that he won was the Legendary Fisherman, as everybody knows, also a card in the Pharaoh's Servant set. That was from Mako Tsunami, the aquatic guy, the guy that had all the fish cards. And then there was a duel with Weevil Underwood, one of the most important antagonists in the series, where he won the Insect Queen. And then he later uses all three of those monsters in one duel against Odeon in one of the final matches of the tournament. So in my mind, I was always a little bit upset as a kid uh, that the Insect Queen card took such a long time to hit the shelves, right? It was never printed until... 2004 as part of the collector's tins. In my mind, the Insect Queen, at least in the anime series, is placed on the same pedestal, if you will, as Jinzo and as the legendary Fisherman. Granted, it's not quite as interesting of a card, right? The, the Jinzo is a very cool looking card and it gets used a lot more down the road, but I always thought of these three cards together as kind of a, a holy trinity, if you will. Joey Wheeler's prize cards from the Battle City Tournament. And from a collecting perspective, it stands to reason that the Jinzo card, the Legendary Fisherman, and the Insect Queen would all be similarly of interest to collectors today. And obviously that's not the case, right? And it's not an accident. It's not lost on me that the Jinzo, right, is a secret rare from Pharaoh's Servant, a box set, uh, whereas the Legendary Fisherman, for example, has a lower rarity, so it's not quite as hard to get. And the Insect Queen just comes out of a tin, so it's not quite as attractive uh, in, from that angle, right? So take that for what it's worth, but I feel like because those three cards are used and played in a very similar sort of narrative arc in season two, that they are somewhat similar in my mind with respect to collectability, and basically at least what they mean to me in my memory of the series and why those cards are important. Now, there is another reason why I think the Insect Queen is independently of an important card, and that's because it's basically the banner monster for Weevil Underwood, who is one of the most important antagonists of the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, essentially. Uh, a lot of villains come and go, but Weevil, he rears his head a lot, right, in the series. He's a very common villain that shows up in a lot of the original seasons. Um, he's one of the most difficult antagonists in the first season when he tears up and tosses the Exodia cards into the sea right on the cruise ship when they're sailing out to Duelist Kingdom. So he's a very like high impact villain who's always been there in the series. And 
A lot of the villain cards, when you think about the different cards that villains use, like Gate Guardian, whether it's the Relinquished or the Barrel Dragon, right? The Toon Monsters and the Toon cards, uh, or even some of the different God cards or the things that uh, some of the rare hunters use during the Battle City tournament. A lot of that stuff is pretty, pretty valuable from a collector's perspective. A lot of the villain cards have a certain added value to them on top of just the stuff that Joey Wheeler uses in his deck. So to me, Insect Queen isn't just a prize card that Joey Wheeler carries around. It's also the, the banner monster for one of the most important antagonists in the series with Weevil Underwood. So there's also that element that makes the card feel to me like it's pretty important uh, relative to a lot of the other stuff kind of floating around in the, in the Battle City narrative and these other narrative arcs over the course of the series. The last thing that I'm going to say, and some people will disagree with me on this, but I'm very much of the opinion that because the collector's tins were the immediate successors to the booster pack tin, it's almost to me like the insect queen is kind of like a BPT insect queen, except it's just called CT1, right? It's the, it's the tin that came after the OG booster pack tins. So, so yes, insect queen didn't come out of a box. Insect Queen is not a secret rare from a box or a pack, right? It came out of a tin, and it was really easy to get back in the day if you just bought the tin. So from that angle of things, sure, it's not as collectible or as hard to find or as hard to get. But for me, it's just sort of the combined effect of knowing that it's a banner monster for one of the main villains of the series. Uh, it's part of this very important narrative for Joey Wheeler as he's sort of coming to age as a duelist, if you will, during the Battle City Tournament, going out on his own, knocking down major rivals without any help from Yugi in most of those competitions. Uh, it's just an important piece of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! and something that I feel like a lot of collectors just sort of toss to the side because it came out of tins that came a little bit later than the real booster pack tin, so it's not quite as cool. So, so those are my thoughts, those are my opinions. Take it for what it's worth. A lot of people hate Insect Queen. I don't know a lot of people that really like the Insect Queen card, except people that do like the Weevil Underwood character. There's not a lot of love. There's not a lot of love for Insect Queen out there in the market, so I figured I would just sort of share some of my thoughts about it. So that's all, folks. Just wanted to give you a bit of insight into some of the reasons why I feel that certain cards are interesting or valuable. Again, different people have different things that attract them to different types of collectible items, but for me, when there's a lot of good history from the anime, when the card is pretty interesting and is a successor to a very popular product like the Booster Pack tin coming out of the Collector's tins, then to me that's a recipe for something that I think is interesting and valuable from a collector's perspective, especially if you have it in a PSA graded format from a very high grade. So that's all folks. Feel free to let me know in the comments what do you think about Insect Queen? Love it, hate it, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks again for watching. This is the Parkside Merchant. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.